Hola gringos y gringos. This week we want to recap a little bit about our expenses for our trip to Kansas City. We're going to talk a little bit about the amount of money we had to spend in preparation to move and what money we made back from our estate sale and our rent deposit. And then Mark's going to go a little bit into the things that are coming up on our trip to South Dakota. Be right after the break. Welcome back. We're glad that you're here. I'm Gina. I'm Mark. We are Gringos R Us. Expats with a plan. So, Mark. Yes. Last week was a little bit crazy for us. Um, we kind of already discussed that. We're going to stick that up in the corner uh, so you can see the video about the estate sale. But it was a pretty hectic week. It's been chaos the last 10 days. And... We are look, finally look, here. It drove me to drink. Yep. We're here in Kansas City and we are finally starting to unwind and just get a little bit back to normal and uh, without all the stress. So, and then every time we turn around, we start thinking about the schedule and oh, then the stress starts to go back up just a little bit, but it's nowhere near what we were dealing with right. there in, Can in, in, in Fletcher and in getting ready to leave. So... So, um, numbers, I know some people have been wondering, how did we do here? Well, let's talk about what we had to do to prepare for the estate sale and for the actual move. Uh, one, I hired a carpet cleaning company that cleaned all the carpets in the house. That was $260, plus we gave them a $25 tip. Yep. Also hired a cleaning service we mentioned in our previous video. That cleaning service net, netted $450. She did such an outstanding job, gave her a $100 tip. Uh, we also rented a dumpster. The dumpster was $260. They did not get a tip. <laughs> Didn't deserve a tip. <laughs> Unless it was the tip of a finger that... Shh. Oh, okay. All right. Shush. Okay. So that was to get the house prepared. Then, of course, we had to have accommodations because we couldn't be in the house while all this uh, stuff was happening. Uh, what did I forget? You forgot. We bought paint and all the... Oh, gosh, that's right. We did. We bought paint. And I think we spent close to $150 on the paint. And then, but... and then we had $150 for Small Job Bob. I forgot about Small Job Bob. I'm going to write him down right now. And small, small job, Bob. If you're in the Asheville area, 
look him up. He's a great handyman, did a great job for what we needed him to do. Awesome so. small job, Bob. Thank you. Okay, so the accommodations. Uh, we stayed at the Mountain Inn Suites, Airport Road, which is off, or not Airport Road, it's Air, Mountain Inn Suites Airport on Naples Road. Yes. Uh, literally, it was like two miles from where we were living. <laughs> it, it basically sits between Hendersonville and Asheville. Yes. And that's just a, sits on the side of the highway. It's a lot of room, which thank God there's a lot of room because we had a lot of stuff stuck in that one room for a week. True, true, true. And it's very affordable. For yes. the area that you're in, it's one of the best rates in that area. So, hey, if you're going to visit Asheville and you're looking for a place to stay, Mountain Inn Suites Airport. So that stay was $807 for a week. It's a pretty good rate, right? Yep. Uh, we also had gone to the grocery store and bought some things that we could heat up in the room for dinner. That ran us around $50. We also, on our way to Kansas City, stayed at two separate hotels that averaged about one, one ten a night. Yeah. Then, of course, we had gasoline for two cars, and we'll explain why in a moment. But gasoline for two cars uh, came out to about $200 for the entire trip. Not bad, considering it's almost 900 miles. So. Yeah, we did good. Uh, eating out, of course, uh, we got to finally meet our youngest daughter's boyfriend's parents. And this has been taking like a few years in the making to finally get together and meet them. And they drove all the way out from one side of North Carolina to the other to come see us because they knew we were busy. So we were very thankful. But yes. um, Thank you very much to the Morgans for their yes. putting in that effort. And it was great to meet them. We now understand why they have such a great young man as a son because they're great people as themselves they really are and um yeah it was a lot of fun uh so they came out and stayed at the hotel where we were staying and we all went out as a, as a big family to eat a couple of times and each one of us took a turn picking up a tab so eating out the one night there's a hundred dollars there for the entire group and then we did some fast food a couple of times twenty dollars sixteen dollars yep and then, of course, we hit Bucky's. <laughs> oh. And, and Bucky's hit us in the pocket about $100 because uh, I stocked up. It's got to last us a few months. Plus, we got lunch. Us? It's got to last me. The thank you. <laughs> thank you. I just wanted to make sure we were clear on who was buying the stuff and who was going to eat it. So. You know, um, I forgot to add Small Job Bob in there, so I have to adjust my numbers here because I was coming out with a, a different value. So basically, we ended up spending just about three grand. Almost $3,000. Okay, so that's how much we spent. Now, our estate sale netted us about $3,400, and we got a $2,400 deposit back from the landlord. And so we brought in $5,800. Therefore, we actually netted in the end a positive... About $2,800. $2,800 roughly. Yeah, I mean, this isn't going to be exact, but that's just an estimate. In round numbers. So for all the money we did get back in and all the money we put out, we came ahead about $2,800. And then we landed here in Kansas City. The first thing we did was head out and hit the grocery store because we got to stock up on some groceries. Because, well, you know, mom's used to living by herself and she doesn't eat that much. So we needed to put some food in the house. Well, it ain't mom's job to feed me anymore. That's right. Yeah. So, all right. So I think uh, that's pretty good. Um, consulate. Well, then we got here, and yeah. so we started going, putting together, as we normally do, mm -hmm. putting together a spreadsheet with the timeline. And as you guys will know from all of our previous videos, we live on putting together a timeline and a spreadsheet. So, uh, actually, the first thing we were doing was we put together the trip to South Dakota. And we started doing the investigation there and found that um, we have to go to two different places. Mm -hmm. One, 
Um, the South Dakota Department of Motor Vehicles is the one that will take care of your driver's license. Then, when we are in Sioux Falls, we have to go to the Minnehaha. That's hard to say without laughing, but it is. It's Minnehaha County, and so we have to see. I told you it's hard to say without laughing. So we have to go to the Minnehaha. Stop it! You're making this hard. The Minnehaha. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. Anyway, we have to go to the county treasurer to get the license plates because you have to pay the tax and everything else. So we have to make two different trips. But the good news is, is we are able to uh, book appointments online for the DMV. And we got two that are very early in the morning. Mm -hmm. So what we decided we were going to do after looking at the prices for the hotels in Sioux Falls is we're going to drive a little bit past Sioux Falls up to the bustling town of Flandreau. Flandreau. And go to the Royal River Casino. Um, Sioux Nation. Sioux Nation. And we're going to get an opportunity to go up there. Uh, had a nice suite uh, that was very affordably priced. And I'm get trying in, to think of what it was. I, 130 I, a night. I actually used AARP to get like ten or ten or fifteen dollars a night knocked off, and yeah, it was about 130 yeah. a night after the taxes. And, it, and it's a two room suite that's going to allow like us to basically full get, size living room. Yep. Yeah. Relax for the weekend. Um, if we want to go hit the tables for a little bit, we can go do that. And other than that, we're just going to chill. For the weekend. Chill for the weekend. Get up early Monday morning because we have a 7.30 a.m. Uh, appointment at the DMV for the, get our driver's license taken care of. And then after we are done with that, go over to the county treasurer, pay our taxes. Mini ha ha. Mini ha ha. <laughs> get our tags and then they have to retitle the car. Therein lies a little bit of the thing that, that why we originally were scheduling to do this in October. Then we got to thinking about it and mm -hmm. went, we have to have the title of that car in our possession mm -hmm. when we get to the border to get the tip, yep. the temporary import permit. So we went, mm, we need to get up there as soon as we can. So we give them plenty of opportunity and time to process the title and then get it back to us. And because we're going to be South Dakota residents, it has to go to traveling mailbox and then traveling mailbox will forward it to us. So now there's an extra step in there. And speaking of traveling mailbox, it's a great service. If you're looking for a mailbox service, please consider traveling mailbox. They are from what we have seen so far, They've done an outstanding job. We get an email anytime. With uh, an image. With an image, with a scan of the envelope. Anytime a piece of mail hits there with our names on it. Yep. And then we just tell them, you know, oh, can you open it and scan it? Which they will quickly do or just pitch shred it, it. Yeah. shred it and make it go away. So we do have an affiliate link down below. Yep. Um, if you are interested in using it, please do consider going through our affiliate <laughs> link. Because we get a little bit of, of um, I guess, credit yes. from Traveling Mailbox for additional. They knock a little off our bill, which. Basically. Yeah, okay. You know, but we are enjoying it. Uh, we like it. I know there's other options out there. Uh, I, I just want to say that I've seen more people use Traveling Mailbox than the other options. And that's why we went with that one, honestly. So we, we got all that. Squared away, got our hotel reservation. It's going to yeah. take us about six and a half to seven hours to drive up there. We're going to go up on a Saturday morning, get there just in time to check in, enjoy the weekend, do our bid on Monday. Then we have to sort of work around Gina's work schedule so that she can log back in and get everything uh, taken care of for her and then drive back that night. Then we went, well, you know what? We now have our passports. Yay! New so passports. The, the new passports came. Well, that means we can now get in touch with the consulate. Gina emailed the consulate, and they very quickly responded back to us. Immediately, like the first business day yep. early in the morning. We sent it on the weekend, and it was here bright and early yesterday morning, on Monday morning, yep. waiting for us. And... They uh, informed us that the first uh, date that they will be taking 
uh, appointments for October is the day after we get back from South Dakota. Yeah. So we're going to drive that night and then get back, log on in the morning, and get us ourselves one of the first available um, appointments in the Kansas City Consulate. And and so basically, um, you know, I'm going to say this. I hope it doesn't get us in any kind of trouble. But the Kansas City Consulate website doesn't really indicate anything on it about doing residency visas. No. And it was because of one of you great viewers that we found out that, yes, they do. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, that's why I emailed them. And they responded and said that they do both the temporary and the permanent. They just don't advertise it. So we are going to them. Uh, the process basically is this. You make your appointment. Once the appointment is confirmed, they want you to either hand deliver or mail all the required documents um, about a week or so before the appointment, I guess. Yep. Was they they, they said a minimum of five days before right. the appointment. And so they have time to review them, and <laughs> then we have our appointment. It's it's just that easy. And it's only 20 minutes from here, so I mean, I, not any problem putting no. it all together, no. putting it in an envelope, driving right. it up there, you dropping know. it off. That way we know they've got it. We don't have to trust we were originally going to do mail. Atlanta, and then Atlanta started restricting their appointments again. And so then it was like, well, what about McAllen? But you know what? We've got somebody right here. Why not just do it right here? Then we don't have to worry about it. So that that is now on the schedule. Mm -hmm. Well, it's on the schedule to be scheduled. That's, you know, this is that's true. the way we do it. If you are enjoying our videos, if you're getting a little entertainment, if you're getting some education, and you want to show your appreciation, one of the best things that you could do is to like and subscribe to our channel, ring the bell so that you get notified when we drop Absolutely. a new video. Really, honestly, what it does is it it works the algorithms in YouTube. It's, it's This is why everybody's always asking you to do these things. As the algorithms see more subscribers and more growth on the channel, it pushes it out kind of to more people. It's not really pushing it out, but it, it knows more people to reach out to. So it helps us grow. I don't know how it works, but it works. Yeah, so it works, and that's why we ask. So we would really appreciate your support in that way if you can. Thank you. So we got all of that. Um, also, if you're considering moving to Mexico, please take a look at the Mexico relocation guide. Uh, Mariana has done an outstanding job. Um, I know you guys have heard this from us before. We were customers long before we became an affiliate for her. And she reached out to us and we gladly were, you know, more than and enthusiastically uh, yeah. positive in yeah. giving a, a great review for her because right. her product is a very thorough and b it is kept up to date yeah and she is always always looking for new and and exciting uh, information that is going to help the expat community it's true and and you know if you're worried about the authenticity of how good this really is and you're not just hearing from people who are saying help please you know, join through our link sort of thing, you can look. I mean, Sir Dragon X, Retired Life in Mexico, No Bull recommends it. Um, Q RuPaul yep. recommends it. I mean, these are two very trustworthy, informative YouTubers out there that we highly respect. And uh, yeah, we're glad we took that dip because uh, it's been a pretty good resource for us. We, we thought we could do it on our own until we actually saw what she did and then we went, um, Well, and, and especially, ooh. especially, after yes. we get into Mexico. Yeah, and I mean, we're, real, we're gonna need some help. So. Yeah, we, we could have found most of what we needed and we did find a lot of what we needed on our own about getting there yep. and also, you know, a lot, the communities and all of that. We, we got that information through hard work and a lot of, of digging in the internet, but the common day-to-day -day stuff, insurances and things like that, yep. she's your go-to gal. Her and her team are phenomenal. So now, Mark, why what? did we have to drive two cars to Kansas City? Hmm. Well, that's because we were going to sell the one. Yes. 
and I'm going through, and I think we've already discussed this one time, but we could not find the title. So, since we last had that conversation, we went to DMV, and DMV told us that there was still a lien on a 2008 automobile. No. No. Long no. paid off. We paid that long, long ago. Long time ago. And knowing how Gina is with filing important documents, they don't just disappear. Yeah. That's not her style. And she was going, well, maybe I put it in the car. And I'm going, that's not, no, no. She knows exactly where she puts important stuff. And so we came to the conclusion we never got it from the lien holder when it was done. I mean, if the state thinks that the lien holder still has a lien on it, then why would we have yeah. gotten the title and, and the and, lien release? And then, to be honest, we never even bothered to look for it. I mean, mm -hmm. we paid the registration, we kept the insurance on it, mm -hmm. we got the tags for it, and we didn't need the title until it's time to sell the car. So, you know, we went to DMV and they were as polite and helpful as they could be, but they're like, till we get a release from the lien holder, we can't do anything. No, nope. so I had to go home and I had to call the lien holder and the lien holder had to look in a backup database essentially because the data was just that too, old. too old for their yeah. current database. They found it. We received the and, uh, and they and they fulfilled exactly what they said they yeah, were going to do. They, they were very quick about it. They said that they would have that out within forty eight business hours, yep. and they were true to their word. And we got it, and now that's on its way to the state of North Carolina, yeah, so, so we can get that title, and we can get rid of that car. And then we just got to figure out how to get all the crap in the one car. Yeah, there'll be another downsize number. Yes, six. there will be. There will be a downsize number six. But fortunately, we're very close to our storage unit. So if there is something that we really just can't let go of, and there are a couple of things, but there may be more after the downsize. So we're, we're close to the storage. There will be. There's going to have to be, because it ain't all going to fit. Well, you know, my big drum from Jamaica. Well, I know. We still got 10 pounds, and we still only got a 5-pound bag. It ain't all going to fit. No matter what we do, we're going to have to go. trying so hard. I know you are, and you've done a great job of paring <laughs> it down. We just got to cut a little further. I just don't understand how people can do this to, you know, down to two suitcases. I can't. You know, and I don't, and, and I don't think that it's wrong if you can't. Some people are... I'm not are, saying. No, no, there are some people that are really good at being minimalists. Okay. But, I mean, I like my beauty products. But you don't need them. I am going to need them. You're still beautiful. I love you. Anyway, <laughs> uh, other, than, other than that, I mean, honestly, I'm bringing a lot of art supplies. I'm not going to, I mean, I can't sugarcoat this. I've got art supplies that are professional grade because I was for a while a professional artist. They're not cheap. They're hard to replace. And I'm not going to find them in Mexico, no matter what anybody says. No, I'm not. That so, she knows of. No, I know. I know because I'm a professional artist and I know these things. So I'm not giving up my art supplies. And part of the things I would like to do, just to give you a teaser, is wouldn't it be really cool if I could do some nice scenic, um, they're drawings, but because it's colored pencil and it uses a lot of painting techniques, we call them colored pencil paintings. But wouldn't it be great if I could do, I don't know, some really cool regional scenic paintings? It would. And maybe make them available to viewers who wanted to have a copy of something like that? Why not? It would get me back into doing something I truly love to do and have not had time to do for the last six or seven years. And, you know, yep. I just think it's a great thing and I can't give up my art supplies. And I'm going to tell you right now, half the stuff on the roof bag is art supplies. It really is. Yeah. Art supplies and sleeping supplies. Yeah. That's the roof bag. That's the roof bag. So, okay. That's pretty much this week. Yeah, we want to thank you so much for spending your time with us because it, it means a lot to us and um, we really hope that you're enjoying it. 
And the fun is getting closer it is. and closer and closer. It is. And we're going to be able to show you the trip going up to South Dakota here in just a few weeks, about three or four weeks from now, and get you all of that information. Got that drone. I'm playing with my drone now. Can't wait to see the casino and the drone. So okay. we appreciate you spending the time with us. We will see you next week. And we are Gringos Are Us. Expats with a plan. We, we are, are doing, doing it. it. You, you can, can too. too. Adios. Hasta la vista.